Hello and welcome everyone, Lionheart here, and today I'm reviewing the XMG P504. Now those of you who've watched my channel for a while might remember that I recently reviewed the XMG C703, and in fact I was so impressed with it, I ended up buying one for myself. That was a 17-inch thin streamlined gaming laptop for around about £1,000. This is the performance class that XMG offer, so these are more expensive but far more powerful than their core range, which the C703 is part of. So, as you may have guessed, this is very heavy on my arm. And it's chunky. XMG aren't really going to get any points here for a stylish chassis and design for the outer casing. In fact, it's a Clevo design. It has all the various outputs that you might need. In some cases, I think they might have added maybe... Uh, some extras which you're not even going to bother with, but it's nice that they've added them in, and the larger case does allow for that. What it mainly allows for, though, which is why it's so big, is high-performance components, notably a GTX 880M, which is currently NVIDIA's strongest mobile offering for a single GPU card short of SLI. You can get this with an AMD comparison and you can find out what that is in the description if you go and you can customize this laptop with various parts. You can also have it in a GTX 870M variant. Um, I mentioned customization. You can customize pretty much the majority of the components in this laptop bar its screen I think is pretty much the only thing that stays the same which is a 15 inch uh, 1920 by 1080 resolution display that I believe does have anti-glare in that although don't quote me on that you can find out in the description for the full product page but as I mentioned you can customize this it starts off at 999 pounds which you know is at the top end of what a lot of you would consider paying for a laptop in some cases far beyond but this is a gaming laptop so it's meant to be portable it's meant to be high performance and in some cases it's meant to be considered a desktop replacement and this certainly meets all those boxes it's portable it has huge amounts of power in games and we'll see that in the benchmarks that I do later on and it is most certainly a desktop replacement due to the frames that you can get in pretty much all of today's current games. I'll be looking at Total War Room 2, uh, Tomb Raider and Battlefield 4 for some benchmarking uh, just to show you what this thing can do with settings maxed out. So without further ado let's have a look at the side ports. Uh, focusing on the right to start with you have all your various audio connectors there, headphone, microphone, uh, and auxiliary jack as well as a USB uh, port there as well and you also have a uh, laptop lock port there. This uh, review model has actually come with a DVD drive. You can, as I said before, customize this and give it a Blu-ray drive if you want or just an optical caddy in there as well. Uh, nothing at the front, uh, nice and clear bar, some little indicator lights over here. Over on the left you have two USB 3.0, an eSATA, uh, an SD memory card slot, you have an Ethernet and a Firewire port. Personally, I'm not going to use that Firewire. I've never had any kind of peripheral or any connection to that, so that might be quite a niche uh, market there, but it's there, they've added it in, so if you do need Firewire for whatever reason, you've got it. At the back, you see we've got these two big exhaust vents. There's nothing on the side, which those of you that don't like having exhaust vents on the side touching your mouse hand, good news for you. Um, so yeah, they'll, they'll be pumping out lots of air. Fans make a reasonable amount of noise. Nothing too excessive. It's not certainly a jet engine uh, fan noise proportion. You're going to notice it uh, until you crank up the volume in your games. But if you're wearing headphones, it's not going to be a problem at all. But the speakers on this um, laptop are pretty powerful. They deliver a pretty high level of volume output. Well, it may not be the best quality you certainly won't need to invest in external speakers because the ones contained here are more than capable but along the back we have the power port which bonus it being on the back it's not on the side it's not going to conflict an extra wire um, to either the left or right sides which is a massive plus something probably one of the few things I don't like about the C703 gaming laptop that I bought from XMG and that I reviewed previously is that unfortunately its power plug is on the side it also has an HDMI port, a mini display port, and a display port. So if you want to uh, output the signal to anything else or uh, connect anything else up to this monitor and its screen, you've got all of those ready, readily available. On the bottom, finally, this is the battery compartment. And actually, as you can see, 
that's the battery there and there. It's quite a small square battery. Something I've not seen in a laptop before, where I'm used to seeing long, big um, chunks of battery either along the bottom or along the top. So that's quite different. Um, the next panel that you have is actually removable if you undo the screws. I don't see any warranty stickers on that, so you shouldn't void any warranties doing that. And that will give you access, I would assume, to your hard drive bays. Now this review model, which I'll tell you about its full specifications in a moment, actually has uh, a hard drive in there and two SSDs. So there is a lot of uh, memory storage capabilities within this. And I think actually on their website they say there's a maximum of 4.5 terabytes of storage that you could actually customise this laptop to contain. So, you know, if you want a big um, portable media storage device for games as well, this really does have a lot of space. Now, you will see here there is a speaker here. And this is actually uh, combines with the two speakers uh, by the screen, which I'll show you when we have a look at the keyboard and trackpad uh, in a moment. This combines to make it a 2.1 system, so you can have some bass coming out. Personally, I didn't really notice the bass too much. Works reasonably well for explosions in something like Battlefield 4. Um, and as, as I said, the speakers are certainly enough to not need to warrant buying uh, an external setup. So it does do its job. You see you've got plenty of fan grills and vents. Again, this all helps with the cooling. Coming back to those two um, vents at the back, it really does have a great, efficient cooling solution. I think it takes only about a minute for it to come back down to its idle temperatures for when it's been blasting um, a game for you know, a couple of hours or something like that, it will come down very quickly, sometimes even less than a minute. In fact, I'll show you with some temperature monitoring software after I've run the benchmarks later on. Anyway, so that's having a look at all the various ports that you have. Again, this weighs 3.3 kilograms, um, so it is a little bit heavier as why I'm propping it up on my shoulder. Having said that, now some people in some reviews I've seen have said that that really diminishes its portability. Obviously, it's not something you're going to want to carry around every single day with you, but it is still portable. You can take this in to uni, you could take this to a friend's house, granted it's going to be heavy in your backpack especially if you've got other books, but I wouldn't really say that's a massive negative against it. The reason why it's so heavy is because obviously it can have that GTX 880M in there, um, or AMD um, comparable. So what specifications does this review model have? Well this review model that they sent me retails or would retail at around about £1,700, which is a lot. To get the best value for money with the P504, Ideally, you don't really want to be customising it more than about £1,500 because the competition to this come in at around about £1,600 for similar specs and storage options. So if you can customise this about £1,500, which you can, you can get an i7 in there, the 880, 8GB of RAM, a terabyte hard drive and uh, an SSD in there for your operating system. That is a good combo in my opinion. However, this review model, as I mentioned, it has an i7 uh, and these specifications will be coming up on screen. The i7, 8 gb of RAM, the GTX 880M, it has two 240 gig SSDs uh, and a terabyte hard drive in there. So it's really showing off the capabilities of its storage here. Um, apart from that, that is pretty much all that needs to be said for the review model. Obviously I've given you guys the options there for the custom specifications if you want them. Again, if you're interested in this, I would highly recommend going and seeing what you can customise this laptop out as and it will obviously tell you how much that's going to cost. Anyway, let's have a look under the screen, under the lid, and have a look at the screen, keyboard and trackpad before we get on to some benchmarks and then return to wrap up and give it a score. So here we have the XMG P504 keyboard and trackpad. As you can see, there are some nice little aesthetic features here. You have the XMG logo glowing in green and the keyboard is completely uh, backlit which you probably won't be able to see in this light. You can change the colours for both using some software provided uh, by XMG which you can download from their website uh, which, or which may come pre-installed if you select an operating system during its uh, customization. should note again actually for this laptop it should have been shown up earlier but I didn't mention it. This is running Windows 8.1. Personally I'm not a fan. I've actually installed a uh, custom kind of script which puts the uh, desktop taskbar back to Windows 7 mode, mainly because I just don't like the Metro interface. So I uh, just thought I'd I'll let you guys know about that in case you have any questions regarding that later on. So you do have separate buttons for the trackpad. These don't give back too much tactile feedback, which is a bit of a shame, but at the end of the day, this is a trackpad on a laptop. I don't think there's ever been a specific trackpad which has really blown us away, and you're better off you know, plugging in a separate mouse 
like I have over here, uh, if you're going to be gaming on this machine um, rather than just browsing. But for standard browsing tasks, going on Netflix, checking the news, checking your favourite Reddit and forums, it's more than enough uh, to make that all work. And the touchpad does support multi-gestures such as zooming, um, pinch there. You can disable that if that does get annoying. I did personally find it was a little bit sensitive and turned those off. Um, the keyboard on the whole is all right. It's gone for a US style enter key, which or return key, which is um, smaller than the UK variant. And uh, to be honest, the keyboard does feel a bit squashed because you do have the inclusion of a full um, num number pad there. I think they could have probably got away with actually not bothering one of those and made it the keyboard slightly larger and just pushed those keys out a little bit wider so they're just the tiniest bit easier to access. Something else that other reviewers did pick up on and I will agree with them is that the function key is over on the right where it often on a laptop tends to be somewhere on the left although I am glad that it's not on the far left because that often gets annoying um, pressing that instead of control. Um, so that does take a little bit of adjusting, but as I said, this is this is probably about adjusting to this keyboard um, more than anything. It's not a deal breaker, it's just something a little bit different than normal and you'll have to get used to that. You obviously have the speaker grills at the left and right supported by that third one underneath for the 2.1 um, sound system. This does support Sound Blaster X5 3 audio and um, that is pretty much all I need to say, bar the fact that there is a little bit of a display up here. Um, it just shows you what um, sort of performance mode you're in, whether you're in airplane mode. Uh, lets you know if the hard drive's being accessed and uh, being read and loaded. And you also have uh, num lock and caps lock lights that will show up there. And that's very crisp and clear. So nice indicators up there. And obviously you have the, a, a small power button over on the far right with a green indicator there. As for the screen, we'll just um, tilt up for that. Oh look, we're on my YouTube page. What a coincidence. So the viewing angles from the screen are actually pretty reasonable um, for the majority of angles. The only time when it's going to actually let you down is if you're tilting it back and if we're looking at this from a lower angle, which the position I've got the camera won't actually show that uh, that well. I might try and lower it so you guys have a better uh, view of how the viewing angles can potentially change. Let's just lower the camera there. So I would say that's probably the optimum viewing angle that I'd have this laptop at. It will go back a little bit and you will lose some of that clarity, especially in the banner there that picks it up. Um, I've got it on maximum brightness, obviously plugged in high performance mode. To the left, and to the right, not the best way of showing you the viewing angles, but from other tests that I've done, the viewing angles are, uh, on the whole are very good bar pushing it right back. So you might just want to adjust that viewing angle uh, there. But on the whole, the screen is very nice and sharp, very nice and clear, and not too much problem with glare either. So now I'm going to just run some benchmarks on Total War Rome 2, Battlefield 4, and Tomb Raider, just to show you a brief rundown of how well this laptop performs, which is what you guys are going to want to know. We've had a look at the keyboard, we've heard what the specifications are and what you can customise it as, and uh, now we're going to see how that translates into real-world performance. So this is a Rome 2 benchmark, Total War. Going to be running the benchmark, I'm using a custom a uh, set of settings. I've used the extreme preset and then I've actually turned on a few extra settings. Uh, Rome 2 has had several optimization patches and performance boosting uh, updates. However, still some of the settings such as vegetation alpha just take too much FPS away and you'll be really pushed to find anyone that is going to use that as a regular feature. So these are settings that I would want to game on and that most people are going to be very happy indeed to game on. The game's actually only detected um, 3 gig of memory for the GTX 880M, but that should be more than enough to crunch through the uh, Thunberg Forest benchmark. We've got the FPS running through a counter up on the top left, and that'll become uh, easier to see, although the benchmark itself has its own FPS counter, so you can compare the two there. So without further ado, let's run the benchmark. I'm just going to whack the in-game uh, music on so you can hear. At the moment, the fans are running in the background. 
that's them probably really, I don't know if that's at full percent, but they that's the loudest I've heard them. So let's now put the music on and you can see a little taste of the audio quality and see how that masks up the fan noise. This, I should say, is at the maximum volume output that the laptop supports. Faris! Oh! Quintilus Faris! Give me back my legions! into a trap, Varus. The German will betray you. He will betray Rome. Arminius, a traitor? I think not. So as we can see there, the average FPS came out at 34.1. We had a few dips early on. That's, again, partly due to the fact the benchmark isn't the best optimized, in fact. Uh, it's more an issue with the game. But when those men started clashing and fighting, that's when we really need to take notice. And the, the laptop was holding fine at well over 35 FPS the majority of the time, which is fine to give you a nice smooth performance in Rome 2. I'm just going to tweak some of those settings and run the benchmark again to something, some of the settings that I know will actively really take a huge chunk out of um, out of your machine, whether a laptop or a PC, and then we'll run that uh, benchmark again and let you guys know, we'll let you go see the difference there. And there shouldn't be much change in the visual quality, it should just be a few tweaks to shadows and what have you, so we'll accept those changes, let it load up again, and we're going to run the benchmark once more, and this time see if there's any radical difference. So that was the audio quality there. So yes, you can probably still notice the fans uh, once we're doing the benchmark, but when the audio is pumped up completely, it's not too much of an issue. So we're running the benchmark again, and I don't know if you can see the count at the top right hand corner of that clearly but the one on the left hand side is showing remarkably higher uh, FPS well over double what we had last time and that's just with a few tweaks mainly as I said to the shadows dropping that from extreme down to medium shadows have always been a huge resource hog in Rome 2 the rest of the settings are pretty much all at the extreme preset we've just lowered some of the um, texture uh, rendering down to a lower format there now up to 60 FPS dropping down. Again, these panning shots will take up more resources uh, than a standard battle in-game, but this benchmark is a nice balanced way of testing hardware and machines. This also lets you uh, hear what the laptop is like when there is no sound as well. Again, really seeing what those fans are like. This, these aren't, though, I should say, by far, they're not the loudest fans I've ever seen. See, it's really cranking up now. That is the maximum they go up to.
but if we quickly whack the sound on So from where I was sitting there directly behind the camera, I really couldn't hear um, the fans once the sound had been enabled there. Maybe just the, the faintest hint of it uh, underneath all the in-game music and sound, but uh, this laptop speakers, as I said, while they're not too flashy and they may not be the highest quality in the world, they definitely do the job and they mask up that fan sound, which will, as I said, it will get noisy when you're really cranking it. But as we've seen, a few tweaks there to the game settings to get it to a far more respectable FPS, 50.5 uh, in that benchmark there. Obviously the odd dips, but that unfortunately is more to do with Rome 2 than anything else. We'll zoom in on those for you guys. So there you can see uh, the benchmark graph and the FPS for Rome 2. But even with everything completely uh, you know, turned on that we can use without knowing that it's going to cripple your game. This can run Rome 2 on extreme settings quite happily and tweaking one or two settings, uh, not very many at all, such as shadows, you can make this very smooth and playable at well over 50 FPS. Now we're going to move on to the Tomb Raider benchmark followed by Battlefield 4, then we'll wrap up this review. So this is the benchmark for Tomb Raider. I've set the options preset and graphic options by default not matchmaking, the graphics to um, ultimate by default we're on the quality of ultimate so there you can see all the settings that we have enabled and turned on shadows are set to normal in the ultimate preset so I could crank them up higher but we'll leave it at the ultimate preset and see how Tomb Raider deals with this and then we may, depending on what the FPS is when it comes out we may need to tweak a few things to show what we can really do to get this playable at the best possible FPS on the XMG P 504. So I'm going to hit start benchmark and then enable the in-game audio and see what you think. So benchmark statistics there, minimum FPS of 33.8, maximum FPS of 60.1, average FPS of 46.8. So obviously as we're panning behind Lara there, we could see that with the rocks in the background, her being fully rendered as well, we went down to the lowest of 33.8. I don't honestly feel we need to test out any more settings here because those settings are well within the threshold of what is playable. Obviously this is on the ultimate preset, so you know if you want to run at constant 60 FPS, you probably just have to tweak a few things. Again, looking probably at shadows, they often take a lot and you can turn out some of the optional extras. Obviously uh, Trez FX, uh, the technology developed just to render Lara's hair more realistically, does take up a lot of resources, so that might be one you want to consider turning off. But the laptop, again, 
chews through this on the best settings we can throw at it pretty much uh, and renders it all very nicely. Finally on to some Battlefield 4 to wrap up our series of benchmarks and then we'll give it a score. So here we are with the Battlefield 4 benchmark just jumping into a random multiplayer server to show you some action there. By default I've got everything set uh, on the Ultra preset which I will very briefly show you what that entails. If we go to the options and then video, everything on Ultra, 4 times MSAA and ambient occlusion of HBAO and high anti-aliasing post. Uh, the one thing I will that I have set to zero, it's personally something that I don't like, is motion blur, so I have that set to 0%. So we're going to jump in game here. And away we go. So we're getting, while in Operation Locker, 60 to 70 FPS with those settings. We'll wait until we go outside though, because obviously when you're rendering more textures around you, That's going to help with things, and I'm a terrible shot. So down to 40 odd FPS there, zooming in, looking out to the snow, and I've just been killed. That seems to be our minimum. So this is perfectly playable with all those settings maxed out. But if you wanted to have constant 60 FPS, you'd only have to lower a few of those settings, perhaps lower the anti-aliasing a little bit. Get out the MTAR here. We'd only have to look a few settings to really make this run even smoother, but it's running absolutely fine. This wouldn't be a problem. Uh, this isn't a problem to game at. As I mentioned, I was using this at a gaming uh, LAN party recently, playing all night on this laptop, and it didn't let me down with any of the games we were playing, and I was running it on the maximum settings the whole time. Obviously I don't have the in-game sound enabled now, but I will enable that now for the rest of the benchmark gameplay. And as you can see, I'm a pro at this game. It's actually quite awkward trying to straddle a camera to record the screen, the screen rather, while playing at the same time. Give it one more round. But so far, these settings are perfectly fine. A little bit of screen tearing. I haven't got V-Sync enabled, I don't believe. I'd probably want to drop a few settings just to make this a little bit smoother, but it's perfectly playable at these settings. And I'm dead. And that's where we're going to wrap up the Battlefield 4 benchmark, guys. So we're now going to return to me and wrap up and give it a score. 
So I just wanted to show you guys the uh, temperature monitoring software I was using just to give you an idea of how well this thing cools. I've literally just closed down Battlefield 4. Uh, the maximum temperature we were running in all those benchmarks it went up to 85 degrees and now the temperatures have dropped down to 50. Uh, and that's within 30 seconds of me closing the game. So while you might find the fans a little bit loud, personally while I was playing those games I was listening I couldn't really detect the fans that much. It didn't detract from the gameplay, it didn't distract me at all um, in those benchmarks uh, and they were just benchmarks so when you're actually immersed and playing the game I don't think you'll have a problem with the fan noise at all and if you do you can just always throw on a pair of headphones but it's nothing you know, it's only going to be something very minor there in terms of sound. But we've already now come down to 50, 48 degrees uh, on the cause of the processor there. Unfortunately, this software isn't showing the graphics card, but it is running this um, very well. So, no problems there with the cooling. In fact, fantastic cooling. We're now going to wrap the review up. So there we have it guys, those are the benchmarks for the XMG P504. If you have any questions regarding this laptop, please do throw them down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer as many as I can about any of the features and the specification we've seen here. Um, obviously, this is some of the top specification you can customize this laptop out with. You can add in another eight gig, I believe actually um, even more than that. You can have a maximum of 32 gigs of RAM in this. This model review model only has eight gig. So you can throw more RAM in there if you want, but it's got the best graphics card you can have in it. It's got um, probably one of the medium tier i7 processors that you can have in this laptop. You can push them even higher if you want. Have a look at that customization options. As I said, around about £1,500 is probably the best value for money you're going to get with this particular model. Obviously, if you do want more storage options and things like that, want a Blu-ray player, uh, a DVD drive in there, then obviously that's up to you to spend the money extra. But at £1,500... For the specification I mentioned earlier of an SSD with a terabyte hard drive, the i7 processor and the GTX 880 and 8 gigs of RAM, that's a very good deal. Uh, obviously this laptop is chunky, the chassis design is somewhat lacking, but I really wouldn't let that bother you too much unless you, know, you have to have the prettiest thing. Uh, for your gaming laptop. This is an adequate chassis design. It has all the ports that you're going to need. Uh, obviously it is chunky and it is heavy, but then so is its power block. Something I haven't mentioned though is its battery, which some of you will probably want to know. Um, you can get around about three hours of low usage, brightness put all the way down using all the um, power uh, conserving features that uh, this laptop has. You get around about three hours of you know very low light use. For gaming this thing is really steps up the power consumption and you might get half an hour to an hour tops gaming on the battery. It's really going to eat through that quite quickly obviously depending on what game and obviously what settings you use that for. So really this is something that's meant to be game uh, gaming plugged in but then I honestly can't think of many gaming laptops that aren't you know going to be good and last for a long time uh, that can ha that can run on maximum settings that you know won't need to be plugged in. You're going to need to plug most of them in, so that's really not going to be an issue here. You have the portability factor that you can take it on the move, you can take it on the go, and you can game. I wouldn't necessarily say you can game on the go, but you can game in multiple places. You can take this with you because yes, while it is 3.3 kilograms, it's not going to stop you putting it in a backpack and taking it with you. Uni students, your textbooks will probably weigh that much anyway, so you're used to that kind of weight. So, what is my score for the XMG P504? Well, for the price of 1500 as I said, that specification that I've kept on coming back to, I say it's a very good deal, and I'd score this um, a 9 out of 10. For this review model, um, with all the extras in there, personally, I wouldn't need all the extra SSDs and what have you, so uh, that wouldn't score as highly. But for the model itself, and the fact that you can customise it, it's getting a solid 9 out of 10. It's very very solid performance which is why if you're looking for a portable solution on the go and you have the money to spend the XMG P504 should certainly be a model that you take a look at. Anyway I hope you enjoyed this review please do remember to comment and subscribe follow me on Facebook and Twitter check out my review of the C703 if you're looking for something thinner. Anyway I'll see you all again next time. Ciao for now.